Welcome to Brutally Honest Talk Radio, where you will learn about an issue minus the BS. We don't always say what you want to hear, but what you need to hear about the issues of the day. Here's your host, Inger, along with Elmo, with his political insight and commentary. I'm Inger, your host, and joining me is Elmo. How you doing, Elmo? I'm doing good. Hello, everyone. We got a lot of good stuff in store for you today's episode. Absolutely. <laughs> we were uh, we were just talking off the air or pre-recording about Trump being called a racist. This is nothing new, but in relation to the COVID nineteen, he was called a racist just for calling the disease or the the virus the Wuhan virus or the Chinese virus. And just because of that, he was he was being called racist or people were saying that it was racist for him to say that. So mm-hmm. my sources proved and showed that there were at least 20, 25 journalists or reporters that called it the Wuhan virus before Trump did. Mm-hmm. However, none of them were criticized or called racist. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, the hypocrisy is amazing, but that's where it came from. And so Trump didn't come up with that or start that. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't his idea. It was already being called that. Mm-hmm. So he called it that. I mean, it obviously has a few different names. Everyone can agree that it is at least being called COVID-19 and coronavirus, although they're the same thing. Or Mm -hmm. COVID-19 is one of the different several types of coronaviruses. Absolutely. (laughs) It kind of goes back to what I was saying about the mouth of the person who it comes out of that's going to decide whether or not I criticize it or support it. There you go. And like you said before, there were uh, many news outlets who were calling it the Wuhan virus and the China virus and um, and just calling it from where it's from. I mean, the same thing happened with the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS. We called it that and no one had an issue with it at that time. But now all of a sudden it's racist when you call a virus exactly where it's from. Doesn't make sense. (laughs) It's an invading incoming enemy. From outside, the same thing with illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of ironic that the governor of California would say, hey, we have sanctuary cities. Come on in here. The water's fine. We don't need to know who you are. We don't need to know anything about you. Mm -hmm. And then at the same breath, he goes, hey, it's a princess cruise line off the coast of California. Hey, I tell you what, you guys drop anchor and sit parked out there and we'll fly some test kits to you. We don't know who you are. We don't know what you're bringing in here. Your citizens doesn't matter. <laughs> We're going to test you. Yeah. Egghead. That's the whole point <laughs> right. of having a vetting process and having people come through the front door, mm-hmm. the front door of the country it's coming through the, um, coming through the different, uh, immigration offices. Mm-hmm. And so, and I want to I want to bring up the point again about the legal immigrants. You remember I said before I found out that most of the illegal immigrants that are caught at the border are not from Mexico, right? Okay, more than half, mm-hmm. and that is important that people know that. So how how are you going to call that effort racist? Who's the racist being targeted now? <laughs> when these the people that are being caught, the illegals, aren't even from Mexico. However, they're being caught at the border and they probably came here or came in through Mexico. Exactly. So, you know, there was a reputation of it having so many holes and being so wide open. And it is it is uh, many, many miles of border, which can be hard to protect which is the thinking behind having a wall, put a wall up there. You don't have to have a man every hundred yards or every 500 feet, have a booth or patrol agent. If you have a good secure wall and and people say, well, wall is ugly. 
okay, you know what? Let's get some graffiti artists and hook it up. I mean, make the thing <laughs> six feet high and let's design it. You know, <laughs> let's bring uh, 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 what's, what's the uh, the, the woman that had the cooking show with Snoop Dogg. You know, because they both did prison time. Martha Stewart. It was bringing Martha Stewart. <laughs> you know, and this uh, this other woman, the interior decorator with the uh, with the gray hair. You, you know, I'm talking about uh, my wife. She's seen her show on uh, Bravo or something. Uh, I can't I can't think of uh, think of her name. But um, you know, if that if that's the problem, it's that's the problem then there's ways around it. And you know what? In the workplace, I've had uh, managers say to me or say to my team, don't criticize what you're being asked to do unless you have a better solution in, in mind. Right. You know, one manager even said, you better not complain about what you've been told unless you got something better to mm -hmm. try. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Once that was said, a lot of people just backed up. Exactly. Because Folks are good for giving a problem, but not a solution to go along with it. If you see a problem, what is your solution? If you don't right. have one, then let's move on. Keep it shut. <laughs> right. And usually, usually the solution to something is closely tied to where the problem is. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly, exactly. And, and folks complaining about a wall down at the southern border. That's not the issue. They just don't want a wall. They'll throw up all kinds of roadblocks as to what is wrong with it, why we shouldn't do it. But when you get down to it, it needs to be done and it's for our sovereignty. I mean, every nation has borders. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> I mean, right, that's right. just the way Just it goes. imagine, imagine the United States on a map without the Canadian border and the Mexican border. What would that shape look like? It would just look like North America, <laughs> you know, <You're> right. <laughs> exactly. a country, a country is known or defined by its borders. Think about it. Say you go to, you go to a map of Europe and you want to find Germany. Mm -hmm. And before I give you the map, I erase all the lines. Mm -hmm. And then I say, now find Germany. <laughs> right. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you're going to do very well and be like, <laughs> well, can I get some cities on here or something? Right. You know, like, you like connect the dots. Some Remember those games? Point. Like you, you don't have a picture until you start connecting the dots. Like, oh, now it, it looks like something. Exactly. exactly. So, you know, that was just uh, about him being called racist uh, for saying for saying that. It's just one, just one more thing that I felt needed to be said. Definitely. Um, Definitely. Something else I want to touch on uh -huh. is, and Trump was asked about this at a uh, press conference a couple of weeks ago. And I guess there's been some kind of violence toward Asians or Chinese, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of Chinese, you can't, uh, or a lot of Asians, you can't tell what country they come from by looking at them. Mm -hmm. So many Asians have been catching flack or been uh, victims of violence by some of these Neanderthals with a misplaced uh, hatred and anger. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. people that are, are from Asian descent, but they're citizens, they live here. They they didn't bring the virus. Right. They they didn't have anything to do with it. So uh, they were talking about COVID and then someone in the audience this was right at the end of this is right at the end of the press conference. And he said, Trump said, this is the last question. And the person said, are you going to have a hate crime bill for the violence against Asians in America? And then he he kind of cut it off and walked, you know, walked off of the platform. Okay. So uh, just just speaking on a, on a hate crime bill. Well, I thought we already had a hate crime bill. Remember oh, we do? <laughs> in, the, in the what is it? Maybe 90s, late 80s. The, mm -hmm. We already black folks already went through this. Already had a hate crime bill, although I don't think they're necessary. Because when you kill somebody, you just kill somebody. It doesn't obviously you hated them when you did it. So I don't know what that's about. But um, well, just it, the point that it, it won't work or it can't work. How are you going to do it? How are you going to make the punishment stiffer if the motivation for killing someone was because of their race? Right. You know. Let's sense. say let's say there's two 
let's say there's two Caucasian guys that get into an, an argument or let's say it's premeditated. They know each other. Let's say they're in-laws or cousins. Mm-hmm. And one plans and plots out premeditated for three or four days and then kills the other person. Mm-hmm. This is not what would const- be constituted as a hate crime because hate crimes are having to do with race or special interest groups or because someone is a gay or a minority. Mm -hmm. Okay. But what I'm saying is in in that case, premeditated murder, the penalty is going to be 50 years to life or the death penalty. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, so this is without race being involved or having anything to do with it. So if someone commits violence against another person because of their race, what are are you going to do to them? What are you going to threaten them with to make them not do it? Look at the states that have capital punishment and have the gas chamber or lethal injection. And the, the murder rate is still up there because when someone gets blinded with the hatred, Or the, uh, by the way, you know, murder is hatred acted out. Mm -hmm. You can't have murder without hate first. Mm -hmm. And so when someone is blinded by that or enraged, or they decided to uh, plan this thing out, there's nothing you can do to to stop them. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Another thing is, at the least, it's going to be a waste of time and money. Whatever was involved in putting this bill together you know, whatever money had to be spent for the bill to get passed. And so that's just, uh, it, it doesn't work. No, no, it's a waste of time. I mean, it really is. It's just a feel good thing. I mean, honestly, it, it, right. folks were yelling and screaming and wanting it. And now they have it. And, and kind of what's the point? <laughs> you, know, it just, you know, and I remember, I remember Bush being active asked about a, a hate crime bill and he just straight up said no no i'm not gonna do that it's a waste of time exactly and so let's uh that that when i was thinking about that that made me think about hate speech because that's the thing now and so some people want to ban hate speech but the key word is speech mm-hmm. and that's one of the the uh the top things in the in the constitution that we have to have or one of the top things that top amendments in the country and the foundation mm-hmm. and so um look there was a uh, some kind of a seminar or public meeting with umar johnson is that his name this black leader who he has uh, six or seven degrees probably in, in his mid-30s okay, and i haven't heard of him Oh, yeah, yeah. I think his last name is Johnson, but his first name is definitely Umar. Okay. And he speaks loud and fast, and he's supposed to be like a a distant relative of Frederick Douglass. Okay. So he was somewhere speaking to a group of black people, and this was after the, the last time that Black Lives Matters was in the public eye with all the cops that got killed in Texas. So this is definitely in the last couple of years. Yeah. And so this black woman stands up in the audience and she said, what are you going to do about hate speech? And she started going through uh, this thing, whatever she was protesting. And then she had some kind of paper or scroll that she was reading from. And she said, hate speech is defined as anything that offends people. I'm like, what? What? (laughs) Well, hey, how about this? It's like I say to you, hey, Inger, the sky is blue. And you go, no, it's not. It's chartreuse. And then somebody <laughs> over here on the corner goes, it's periwinkle. <laughs> and I'm offended by the two of you. <laughs> you know, exactly. They need to be locked up. So <laughs> it's like anything that offends you, look, uh, unless somebody has a platform where they're saying to kill people. Because mm-hmm. like I said, uh, murder is hatred acted out that's the mm-hmm. o- that's the only way that it's any kind of a threat to me or society and we we don't want people like that remember manson and hitler they never killed anyone themselves they mm-hmm. organized and led other people to do it 
Yes. And yeah. Manson was in prison till the day he died, you know. Yes. Yes. All right. So un unless unless you're doing that, there there's no way and Europe is having a problem with this too, defining hate speech mm -hmm. or in, in England or the United Kingdom, because people are so super sensitive and, and they need to just have confidence in themselves and what they're saying or what they're talking about. Yeah, so. and I don't know if it's so much having confidence in what they're saying, but folks are so accustomed to being coddled now. Um, you know, let's it's they can't take in anyone that does not agree with what they think, regardless. I'm saying what a, they a think lack is of true a lack or not. Of confidence mm -hmm. is causing people to want to have uh, a hate speech banned or that that definition of it and you know christians need to know christians need to know that as soon as there's some kind of bill or law passed about hate speech and people saying things that are offensive then as soon as a preacher says jesus was the son of god or he rose from the dead or he died for my sins or that homosexuality is wrong, or anything that is preached in the Christian church, then they're going to say, hate speech, arrest that preacher. Yeah. And the preacher of your church is going to get, they're going to put the clinks on him and put him in jail. Mm -hmm. So it, there's two sides to it. You can't, you can't ban any speech without it affecting good people and bad people. Right. And that's what folks don't understand about government. That if they can scream and say, I want this to happen, I want that to happen. Well, government, by its definition and the way it operates, mm -hmm. it has to do the same for everybody. And folks right. don't get it. They just don't get it. Yeah, it's uh, speech is kind of like uh, like a, like a gun or any weapon. It's only as good or as bad as the person using it. Exactly. exactly. So we we don't we don't want to ban it because that'll knock the the good people out, and yeah. and the pen is mightier than the sword. So that's not that's not the answer to anything. <laughs> Not at all, you know. That's that's what they're trying to get President Trump on his speech. They don't like what he's saying. Going back to what you were saying before, you're calling it the China virus. Why is that? That's racist. They're clearly offended by that speech, and they want him to stop using the speech because they are offended by it. And yeah. you know, without any hesitation to some of the things that they say that are just flat out lies. And they've been able to get away with for so long, you know, but they're they're seeking to um, shut someone else down because they don't agree with it. <laughs> Even though what they're reporting, most thinking Americans don't agree with. But yet and still they continue to say it. So. Right. And then it's it's so much that Trump is saying that they have a problem with whatever it is mm -hmm. with combating and fighting the virus. And for him to say, I saw this thing on Yahoo a couple of days ago, and the headline was, President is hopeful that things will get better and maybe things will go back to normal in a month or whenever. And then underneath that, it said something like, but it's going to take a lot more than just wishful thinking to do it. This is obviously a, a commentary by Yahoo, you know, yes. they're putting in it, like, you know, I mean, in, in, in the same breath, in the same breath, like one person will say, well, the president needs to give people hope. And then when he says something like, oh, he's giving people false hope, <laughs> you know, he's misleading them. <laughs> and, and he can't know, win. He cannot win. Can't. Talking about the, the people, somebody 
took some kind of fish tank cleaner, thinking that it would kill the virus, and said, because, because of Trump promoting this or endorsing this, he would never tell anyone to do that. <laughs> you know, that's why you, you gotta you gotta search, you gotta search, read things in the context, see the whole story, and get a few a few sources. Absolutely. And those folks that would, if I'm hearing the story correctly, they were, um, I think they were a couple, maybe in their 50s or so, maybe their 60s. And, you know, they decided this is what they were going to do. Obviously, the husband passed away, the wife, she was sick. They kept, or they, they say they kept hearing him push this particular drug. Obviously, they got it wrong. He didn't, he's not pushing alcohol, or, I'm sorry, aquarium cleaner obviously but folks on the internet sought to blame him for those people being stupid i mean it's like you know when he clearly says before you do anything and this is just a common thing now you just you talk to your doctor first you make sure of what's going on you get his his or her opinion and um and then go from there you certainly don't get something and start taking it yourself thinking oh this is going to cure me of this disease or it's going to prevent me from getting some disease. I mean, that was absolutely stupid on their part. And it was even more stupid for folks to blame President Trump online. I, on my feed, there were people who were saying, oh my gosh, he's, he I can't believe he did that. It's like people think, oh my gosh, it's just ridiculous. It's just absolutely ridiculous. It's like, good. And uh, fish tank cleaner or bleach are not home remedies. For any- you shouldn't be applying it to your skin. Don't take it internally, externally. Usually when you see a warning label or a warning not to do something is because at least one person has tried it. <laughs> so, but I want, to, I want to educate people about something that I learned in college and uh, majoring in journalism. There's different things that, that we learn about reporting. Real reporting. Like, there used to be people like Ted Koppel and Peter Jennings. You couldn't tell whether they voted Republican or Democrat. You really, I still to this day, I don't know. Although usually people that are more, more laid back and not, not led by emotion, leaning more toward the, the right or the Republican side. Yeah. However, so th- this is, this is real journalism, not, uh, not, uh, advocates or um, activists, what I, what I mean to say. Right, they're not advocates. But, right. But reporting, reporting things for what they are. You know, the who, what, when, why, where. You go through that. You go through those things and put them in a the story, even it, with a little poetic touch on it, you're going to be a decent journalist. Mm-hmm. So just a couple of things. One is whenever you hear a reporter saying, some say that the government is trying to put together this plan or that plan or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Some say it might rain in a couple of days. Whenever you hear a reporter say some say, what mm-hmm. that means is he says. Right. That's what <laughs> he is saying. He actually said it. it his opinion, it's his opinion. He's told at least one other person. <laughs> All right. Or else he'd mm-hmm. be quoting names. So mm-hmm. whenever they whenever they do that in general and make it vague and say the phrase some say that's the guy that's speaking. Yes, that makes and sense. The other thing is whenever you see a headline or the name of an article or story in newspaper or on a website and it's in the form of a question, that mm-hmm. means like like let's say something ridiculous like uh, let's say. Could the coronavirus last until 2023? So Mm -hmm. people see that and they think, oh, they have some information and some reason to believe it might last until 2023. No, Mm -hmm. they're putting Mm -hmm. it in the form of a question because they can't make a statement Mm -hmm. because they don't know. (laughs) And they they don't want to be sued. They don't want to be found liable for saying something that wasn't true. But you you can ask a question. You can ask any question. You, you mm-hmm. can ask any question. You, you could have a headline saying 
could Batman and Superman team up, swoop down here and save us? And that'd be the <laughs> that'd be the head of the article. <laughs> that's the headline. <laughs> right. So and, and that's that's usually and you see this a lot like uh the 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 different news programs that are surround like Inside Edition or 2020 mm -hmm. that is surrounding like the the real news you know we yeah. we have an exclusive story and mm -hmm. so when, whenever whenever you see the form of a question that means those two things they don't know they don't have enough information to make a statement mm -hmm. or they so when when you see that question just kind of breeze over that pass over that. Yeah. Absolutely. It's it's not it's because they're not doing journalism. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're they're not. They're putting I don't know if it's their opinion, the editor's opinion or whatever, but it's definitely not journalism. It's bait yeah. in it's, it's clickbait. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. Right. It is. So and that so, was happening. I think that happened today at today's press conference. There was a reporter that stated something to the effect the attorney general said blah 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 okay the attorney general he's like okay who which attorney general who's this attorney general give me more information give me a name i mean that sort of thing he he got on them rightfully so to say if you're gonna say this then let's put the names out there let me tell me so we can we can <laughs> get this sorted out here you know but again a, a reporter did this and clearly yeah. just to get attention or whatever this, you know, whatever the motive was. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, and it's a shame that folks don't ask the questions when they're reading these articles. You know, you have the time to read something, then you have the time to sit there and question what you're reading. You know, where's the, what's the other half of that story? Where is, and I hate, I hate it when stories say, well, sources say, what sources? Right. Where are they? Who are they? You know, give me some so a point of reference here. But no one questions. They just assume, yes, that's it. And they go with it and they run with it. <laughs> Think about the fact that the National Enquirer and the Globe are still in business. That they are still mm -hmm. publishing ridiculous things. Their covers are ridiculous. Right. You know, talking, talking about everything from Elvis still alive to <laughs> aliens coming down here, having private meetings with politicians, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. so if people and the people that that's another segment of the population, people that buy Inquirer, they have a vivid imagination that they, they know it's like they know that they're watching a fiction or a sitcom or something that isn't real. Mm -hmm. But. You know, they're, they're making enough money. It's a national publication for them to for them to stay in business and have an audience. I guess the people from my generation passed on subscriptions to their children or let let them read it uh, because it's still, you know, still very, very popular today. It, it is. But you know what? The thing is, they are what they are and they're not trying to pretend that they're anything else. They're a tabloid. They've been True. a tabloid for a long time. And they're just like, okay, this is who we are. Whereas you have papers like the New York Times, the Washington Post, and others who try to purport that they are journal journalistic um, journalistic newspapers, and they're not. They're they they're just two letters short of being just opinion pieces. Yeah. So at yeah. least the Inquirer, they they own up to what they are. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. So, hey, let me ask you, have you heard about the group of people called the furries? The fur, F-U-R-R-I-E-S? Yes, exactly. No, I have not. Okay, what so I found out, I found out about this group of people because there were uh, two CEOs or two executives that mm -hmm. had lunch together and they're talking about different things going on in their office or in business. Okay. And I, I don't remember who they were or what companies they were from, but let's say Amazon and other Home Depot or whatever, okay. you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're, you know, they have business luncheons and they're trying to learn from each other and, and mm -hmm. talk about different issues, you know, like maybe I can learn from another guy's mistake. So right. we're sharing issues and information. Mm -hmm. So this guy says, you know, one one executive says to the other, 
says, yeah, uh, there was a guy in our office who was complaining that there was not a box of kitty litter in the men's room. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> let me stop there and say, now, furries, <laughs> that there are people sense. that they, they, identify, they identify with being an animal. Oh, gosh. Just okay. like somebody can uh, supposedly identify with being uh, a certain gender. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there are people that they may feel like they're a porcupine, a rabbit, a raccoon, but it's mostly cats and dogs. Okay. There's obviously a community of these people. Uh, I'm sure that they more congregate one part of the country than the other, but this is this is kind of spread out across state lines. Okay. And they're calling themselves furries. Okay. Wow. So okay. back to the situation, this guy... He, he goes to management and says, I want you guys to get a box in the men's room and make sure it's filled with kitty litter. Okay. <laughs> because that's, that's the way boy. he goes to the bathroom. I guess at home, too. Oh, you know, whether, boy. He's, whether he's doing a number one or a number two. Oh, my that's, goodness. That's, that's how he wants to go. And then he tells them, he tries to railroad them and say, and if if you don't get one in there, I'm going to human resources. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. So guess guess what happened? Uh-huh. They they did not get put one in there. No, they did put one in there. Oh god. So they were scared he was gonna go to HR and complain about it. And they oh, didn't want gosh. negative publicity for, for this thing to, you know, really get popular escalate. Wow. So and now let me ask this question. Were they a publicly traded company? Yeah. Okay. Okay. They weren't a private company. Okay. No, wow. Yeah, this, these were uh, these are from big big companies or big corporations. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Good gracious. So, you know, That's whatever true. whatever I need to do, whatever I do at home, I got to bring it into work or. Just, you know, like a like a normal person or regular person. I don't know who raised this person. I don't know. They had to, when they were a child at some point, use the facilities in the restroom like everybody else. Definitely. So. Yes, they weren't born going to a cat box in a regular restroom at a company, honestly. Right. I mean, and you know, the thing is, and I've been hearing this a lot, too, um, was the American Psychological Association when they should be marking things as true psychological disorders due to political correctness, they are no longer doing that. There are some right. things that truly need to be psychological disorders. Like you said earlier, folks who gender think they think they're one gender when they're actually another. Um, that's something that they have, I guess, seeded. I guess the psychological association has seeded over under the guise of political correctness. I mean, those things, that's um, this gender dysphoria. I think that's what it's called. But that is actually a psychological disorder that needs to be addressed. But now, you know, because we don't want to hurt people's feelings and people right. might get offended, like we were talking earlier, we have crap like this where you're going to try to take a man, a man or a woman's company down because of your psychological disorder because you're feeling a certain way today. I mean, it's, it's asinine. Absolutely. So, you know, you open the door for that. Now the cat people, we need a clawing pole. You know, we need a big uh, a big stick in there made of fur or cloth just in case we feel like pawing our nails on it. You know, just to get the kinks out, just to stretch. Oh, goodness. <laughs> you know, I mean, wow. don't, when I reach my quote at the end of the quarter, I don't want a trophy. I want a hearts two and one. Or a sergeant's collar. Let me wear that with pride. Wow. But yeah. I mean, I, I, it's a psychological problem. Like it, I said, I don't know that. I don't know how all this started. I don't know how a person comes from that to this. But yeah. I'm I'm making fun of it because I obviously think it's ridiculous. When you bring it, you bring it into you bring it into the workplace, and the workplace or the manager should say no or mm -hmm. hold on. 
let me get this straight. You think that you are this animal? I'm going to I'm going to uh, commit you to this many hours of psychological testing. Mm-hmm. You know, if the job you do here is that valuable, you know, we, we I don't know if insurance would cover that, but it's like we, you have, you know, some people that got to go to therapy or drunk drivers that got to go to DUI school. Yeah. So, right. I, yeah. I want people to tell me the truth when I'm doing stuff that's ridiculous so mm-hmm. that I can get back on the track, right. not keep on wandering away into my own world mm-hmm. and then be, you know, be some kind of, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, what they're uh, doing is giving that legitimacy. That's the problem yeah. by addressing it. It's it's giving it credibility when it has none, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's really something. Uh, wow. I was out today and uh over the weekend and at this time we're still dealing with uh self quarantining. I have to I have to get out. I try to get out at least once a day, even if it's just walk my dog or whatever. And yeah. then, you know, yeah. you have your quick errands that you need to run and you go out. And I've been noticing, at least in my neck of the woods, that only the women are wearing masks. Men okay. are not wearing masks. Okay. Even <laughs> couples, even men and women who are together. So it's not mm-hmm. like only the women are talking to each other. Like, they're going out or getting ready to go out to the store and a woman puts on her mask and the man sees it and that doesn't influence him or make him think that he's susceptible the same way that that she is. Okay. Now, I've heard it been said that unless you yourself have the virus, there's no reason uh, for you to have, have a mask on. Right. So... You know, I wore it once. Last week, I went to a 24-hour uh, donut shop, coffee uh-huh. shop, middle uh-huh. of the night. I went there. I, w- I wore the mask when I went in. Okay. And then when I came out and got in my car on the radio, this woman from the CDC, she's on the news talking about, and if you don't have the virus yourself, there's really no reason. It's not going to protect you or it's, it's not going to. Yeah, it's not going to protect you by you wearing the mask. Mm-hmm. Like if someone if someone is sick, mm-hmm. then it would uh, it would shield them coughing on someone else or coughing yes. into the air. Yes. But you know why did why do you think it is that uh, uh, to to the the vast degree, you know, to the varying degree that there are much more women wearing the masks than men. Um, women naturally go for security. So I think it's a part of that thing. Whereas men are more risk takers just, just by nature. So women will do the safe, secure, that sort of thing where the men are like, well, whatever, you know, cause it's hard to get a man to go to the doctor. Cause he's just, yeah. you know, it's just, whereas that. women will go and get the annual checkups and all that sort of stuff. Men are like, well, whatever. They just just men are just I think that's what it is they're more risk takers Over the last 20 years, I may have seen one, I know I've seen at least one, maybe two men at the doctor when I go there that's mm-hmm. under the age of 60. Okay, okay. right. Yeah, y'all do. I may have seen two, two men. And I, I go to the doctor at least twice a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually, I mean, I may, I may get sick once, but I'm going to get my annual physical checkup mm-hmm. and then is usually uh, because I'm an older guy and not a younger guy. It's just different things that come up. And when something strange 
like I've never seen it or felt it before, mm -hmm. then I may want to get it checked out. But in any case, I just I don't I don't see young men in the doctor office, which is ironic where people protest so much about having health insurance, but don't use it. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, we will yeah. fight. We will, we will vote for someone based on whether or not they're going to give us health insurance or <laughs> universal health care. Right. And, but I, I blame the media. The media and politicians really scared people and sold that. They said, you need this. You mm -hmm. really need this. And look, you know, anybody who is, and I've told, told you or talked to you about this before, anybody that is sick can go to a doctor or a clinic, even if you don't have health insurance. Yes. You can go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so I've, I've said that I felt people that have cancer or some kind of life debilitating disease or terminal illness, mm -hmm. I think that the church, I think the government can have something where there's a, a dollar taken out of every check for paying for patients that can't afford, but this is this can't be uh, cosmetic or something frivolous. It's got to be like they're flat on their back. I mean, they they have to go to the doctor, they or they have to be hospitalized, mm -hmm. and they don't have the money for it, where the bills would be sky high, which will happen to a cancer patient or an AIDS patient. Yeah, asking some politicians. Uh -huh. Some politicians may not like that because it'll take the power out of their hands of the yeah. illusion of them being a savior. Right. Just like with global warming. No. We want that to be a thing because when when election time comes around, we want you to know and remember that we fought for you. <laughs> this right. thing was gonna this thing was gonna melt the polar ice caps or whatever <laughs> it is. Mm -hmm. So that's that. You want to uh, you want to roll into some some uh, interesting conspiracy theories now? Yeah, yeah, let's go for it. All right, all right. So one that I don't know what these planes are called that leave a trail of fog or cloud. They oh, make these lines. What's it called? Kim trails. It's like Kim, like K I M. I know C H E M. Oh, like chemical. <laughs> yeah, chemical. like chemical trails. Right. I think right. that's what they I think that's what they stand for. And one thing is supposed to be putting some kind of poison in the air mm -hmm. or to try to subdue people or uh make them what would it be like uh you know, just opiate opiate the people and make oh, them gosh. docile. So that they won't, uh, you know, just take the bite out of them. Oh, so. my word. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's kind of a, it's kind of strange. I remember, you know, I would see these when I was a kid. And I saw them much more up north than do down here in the south. And, mm -hmm. you know, I saw them as a kid. And we would never see them take off, never see them landing. But sometimes we see them in real time way up there. Like, had to be at least... Uh, 30,000 feet or whatever, leaving these streaks. And as a kid, I just thought, oh, that's a cool design. I actually nicknamed them Skyscraper. But then when mm -hmm. I got older, I saw that that name belonged to tall buildings. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Like, wow, look at that. They're scraping, they're scratching the sky. <laughs> <laughs> but they think, folks think that something nefarious is going on. Yeah, that there's there's some kind of uh, some kind of a gas, or someone said uh, like for the insects, mm -hmm. or to fumigate the city or fumigate the area to keep down the level of pest control and mosquitoes. Oh my gosh! Okay, so that takes you, work to get <laughs> there. <laughs> you want to get much lower to the ground too, if you want to knock out the pests and the and the insects. Oh uh, my gosh! Did you ever hear? Did you ever hear anything about Saddam Hussein still being alive? What? 
Saddam Hussein, this started, of course, this is the most popular right after his execution. And people are saying, Saddam Hussein, no, oh, he's too big. I mean, I don't I don't know where people pull this stuff from or pull it out of, but no, he's too big for them to kill, you know. What? <laughs> so I, I've told people his execution is one of the few that was recorded on film, just like Muammar Gaddafi, even though I think yeah. they had a stabilizer on the camera, you know, it was shaking a lot while they were, you know, jacking him up all over the place. Yeah. But Saddam Hussein, they went into some kind of a building, right? They had like a staircase and a balcony. Mm-hmm. They let him pray to Allah or say whatever his last words were, put a noose over his neck. And yeah. there's five or six guys standing around and they got hoods on. And, and these are these are Arabs, or yeah. uh, you know, the, the, mm-hmm. these are these are people. These are his own people. Yes, because the United States just caught him and brought him to justice, and then the what? tribunal, and the courts, and the judges were were Iraqi or from that region. We didn't have anything to do with that, but so someone wanted to record it to prove that it was real. And so he's up there, and then they push him over the side, and, you know, the the rope was too long to reach the floor, and it did the job. Yes. I've actually heard people say, that wasn't Saddam Hussein, that was a stunt double. Oh, my Hold God. Hold on. Time out. Time out. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If, I, if I'm a stunt double for Brad Pitt, when you want to actually kill me? It's, uh, hold on. There's no amount of money that you can pay me. Oh, you <laughs> thought that I was really him? Surprise. All right, joke is over. <laughs> Trying to make my way out of here. Or y'all going right. to be following the Elmo-shaped hole in the wall. I'm about to get out of here. Okay? So it's like, it was, I'm, I'm like, dude, you can see his face. Oh, they, they just gave him plastic surgery. Oh, really? Okay. They, wow. they went, when? When did he get the plastic surgery? Was that? Was that before or after he got arrested? You know, they they got he's this guy's walking around, he's walking around like this all the time. And, and the the real guy is this, this guy's gonna take the fall. You know, it's ridiculous. But you know what's interesting is mm-hmm. my dad said when he was a kid, I make a lot of references to my dad. Obviously, we <laughs> we talked a lot, you know. <laughs> But uh, he said when he was a kid, and this would have been like in the early 1950s, mm-hmm. and he had a lot of aunts on his mother's side of the family. He had four aunts and a lot of cousins. And so the aunts and the older people, the adults in the family, were saying that Hitler wasn't dead. Oh, this is boy. in the 1950s. And so he was, he was killed uh, like 45, Wait. 1945. Mm-hmm. He took a cyanide tablet. Yeah. You know, he's in the wolf's lair in that bunker underground. And when when the allies were closing in on him, he he committed suicide. Yes. And then they put some kind of hook in his jaw and (laughs) dragged him out of there. And (laughs) but uh, again, because what he did was so horrific Mm -hmm. and his persona was bigger than life. Then the way that he dies or the story behind him, you know, that's got to be just as over the top or his story can't die with him. And people were not based on anything or any proof. What have you heard or, you know, different things about uh, September 11th and things that happened that day, you know, conspiracy theories? Yes, I have. What what do they say? Um, Bush was behind it. And that another one was, if it hadn't been an inside job, the buildings would have fallen differently. And I heard that one. Um, another one, who was it? 9-11 Truther. I think that was Van Jones. Um, they cleaned him up and put him out on the airwaves. And now he he looks like he has a half a, half a brain. <laughs> you know, two minutes worth of sense. Because they cleaned, they scrubbed him up and put him out there. Um, but yeah, those are the ones that I've heard about 9-11. So some other things are that there were all these documents, all these important documents that were in filing cabinets 
in the World Trade Centers. And Bush didn't want people to find these or get a hold of these. So oh my gosh. blow up the buildings and everybody in it. Oh, you know, my gosh. The documents aren't in the Pentagon where they belong. They're in the World Trade Center with Smith Barney and these other companies. So that wow. was that's supposed to be a cover up. And then uh, I heard this guy say that at least one of the planes, maybe he believed both of them. But he said before they crashed into the building, they landed the planes, let all the people off. Took them back up in the air and then crashed them into the building. What? Oh my god! And I'm like, I'm like, dude, look, they got the <laughs> names and Seriously. pictures of the passengers. These are real people. Yeah, with families that you can see that anybody can look up. You know, and that's that's related to the way that people died, or kind of hinting that they died for nothing. Oh, you know, just just kind of mi minimizing their death. And then also some people don't believe that the Pentagon was attacked, that there was no plane that crashed outside the wall and think that there were no deaths that happened at the Pentagon. Oh, when my the word. The people who work there, they say that when it hit, they were knocked back 15, 20 feet mm -hmm. and there were big holes busted in walls. Mm -hmm. And the way yeah. the Pentagon is set up, it's got in circle, circles inside of circles with the yeah. generals in the middle, which was mm -hmm. at the time it was built to keep the enemy out and to keep the, the heads alive so that they could continue to strategize. Yes. But, you know, they say, they say uh, that never happened. So. Wow. Really? People are a trip. Just a trip. Sometimes I think about Miley Cyrus and everybody represents a certain demographic. Mm -hmm. And so there are other people that probably think the way that, that she is. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you remember when Trump first got elected, she was making these selfie videos and she seemed crying crying like oh my god what are we gonna do now and she said she claimed that she was gonna move to canada oh, and yeah. she did she did oh for she, she's one that actually went for about a year and then she came oh. back oh, okay but well, at least she did what she said she was gonna do most of them just <laughs> yeah. threatened and they're still here yeah that's true that's true <laughs> but she has money and that's one of the one of the reasons why it's hard for someone like her to accept a real life president like Trump, because she grew up in a bubble with by the time she was born, her father was already a successful artist. Yes. And she grew up on the Disney Channel mm -hmm. and somebody like Donald Trump would have never been a guest on Hannah Montana. You know, right. <laughs> and he doesn't right. fit in her world. <laughs> right. But. Yeah, I would say this, and I've been saying this to anyone, to anyone that thinks that America is not a good country to live, or if you think that there's another country that's better, just go visit, go visit for three months or six months. Mm -hmm. And then whatever you decide, I totally accept. Yeah. But, you know, don't, don't come back, don't decide to move back. And then you're still criticizing the country as a country you can you can criticize individual problems mm -hmm. but don't criticize the freedom and everything that comes with with america for people to at least be able to be able to do what we do exactly exactly well they don't realize how good they have and they assume just yeah. because it's like this here that it's like this everywhere and um you know and that's a shame that one, they don't have that perspective, even if they were never taught, they should have that perspective. And two, that you have so many um, celebrities who are, who've been blessed by this system. I mean, honestly, they have, they have taken full advantage of what capitalism in America has to offer. And then they're still stupid about it. I mean, yeah. they are still, they still don't get it. After all of that, they don't get it. Yeah. What's the Canadian guy who made the documentaries like Bowling for Columbine? Oh, Michael Moore. Michael Moore, 
who made his money off of criticizing America, but would have never made the money that he made <laughs> unless he criticized America and was able to sell his documentaries in America. Yeah, absolutely. So, as, as bad as this country is, in his mind, we're a big part of his success and a reason for it. Exactly. Exactly. And that he and he's and he doesn't see it. He does not see it. Slams it every chance he gets. It's talk about missing the forest for the trees. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I wanted to say a couple things about North Korea, what their number one industry is. Mm-hmm. How they make money and bring in money. Because okay. a lot of a lot of other countries don't do business with them. They got mm-hmm. sanctions on them. And they're not they're not an open capitalist country. So right. money one of those places where money moves really slow. And a lot of people just don't wanna a lot of governments don't wanna touch them because of how they treat their own people. Yes. So yes. They're their number one, their number one money maker or their bread and butter is uh uh human human trading. What am I trying to say? Like not slave trading, but human trafficking. Okay. Mm-hmm. Human trafficking. They make uh-huh. fifteen billion dollars a year is their mm-hmm. gross national product. Mm-hmm. And most of that money, most of that money comes from human trafficking. Now, wow. when I hear that, I'm thinking that's all inclusive. That's not just talking about girls being sold mm-hmm. into mm-hmm. Uh, uh, sex trafficking. Sex trafficking. Mm-hmm. That's got to do with men, women, boys, girls. Some people is for sex. Other people, it's so that they can have a slave to mm-hmm. work for them. Mm-hmm. In the in the house or on their property or whatever. I mean, that's that's what the definition of slavery is, is yeah. becoming someone else's property. Mm-hmm. So they turned over to them to do whatever they want to do where well, they own them. You know, they mm-hmm. they are their property. Yeah. And so I just wanted to say that and and put that out there. Okay. And, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I read a book. I read a, a couple of books, as a matter of fact. Um, one was Escape from Camp 14, and it was about a young man who did escape from the labor camps of North. And they're not labor camps, obviously. They're death camps of North yeah. Korea. And the the it's a dictatorship, obviously. It's um, communist. It's a communist dictatorship. Um, and the... How do I how do I put this? It's insidious how he has torn families apart, how he's torn the society apart. Um, it's it it's worse than you would ever think. You would think how could people survive in that? And it's 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 horrid. It it will leave you speechless. It will leave you speechless. That's how insidious and evil that that regime is and um you know f- to the extent let me see if i can think of an example right quick to the extent where they have this young man had a brother and the brother shipped off somewhere and they don't know where he is if he's still alive and meanwhile the the young man has a mom but the mom wasn't necessarily in love with the dad um, they were just kind of paired up somehow. And then, you know, the mom doesn't know how to have a relationship with the kids. The dad doesn't know how to la- have a relationship with the kids because they were just kind of thrown together. That's, I mean, yeah. just the insidious, insidiousness of it all. It is, it will astound you. It it really will. So North Korea and, is, 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 wow. <laughs> it's definitely a human rights issue going on down there and if it weren't going to i guess take the people out or hurt so many people he need to that thing needs to be blown apart you know he just needs to be blown up that's how evil it is i think china should get involved if they're going to be north korea's big brother and they're going to be allies with them and back them up if they were to get in a war with somebody else okay say look well we we condone 
I mean, we're not trying to tell you what to do, except for when it's infringing on the rights of people in their lives. And I mean, mm-hmm. China is communist also. And so I'm sure mm-hmm. that they don't share a lot of what they may do with China, but they, there's a lot of similarities. But yeah, a lot. I, I bet you that, mm-hmm. that no, one, no one in China, no Chinese citizen would want to live in North Korea. I bet mm-hmm. you that. No, no they you don't. Never see, you never see people that live in South Korea, live in Seoul, uh, breaking in or trying yeah. to rush to get to North Korea. Mm-hmm. And that, that lets you know right there, there's got to be something wrong. Seriously exactly. Wrong. Exactly. In China, folks escape. When they try to escape, they, I want to say they have to get through China because China will send them back. will send the people from North Korea. They'll send them back. Their only way of really being safe and free is to get to South Korea. And I'm not good at geography, but I want to say like there's a little piece of China, like there's North Korea, then there's a part of China, then you're somehow at South Korea. I think that's how it goes, but I'm not good at geography. But China, let's just say long story short, China sends the people back to North Korea if they catch them. And there's a there's a stretch of land called the DMZ Mm -hmm. or the the demilitarized zone that was created Mm -hmm. after the Korean War that doesn't belong to either country and so like this this north korean soldier that was seen running for his life knowing that they were going to shoot at him mm-hmm. that he wanted to get out so bad and he made it out and he mm-hmm. made it across the border so he wasn't in south korea yet but he got out of north korea and that mm-hmm. was the important thing yeah. and then there's this you know, it looks like whenever I see it, just a battlefield, just mm-hmm. a gray, gravelly, barren with barbed wire and things like that uh, spread out for, for, you know, for them to for them to get through. And so, yeah, yeah someone gets desperate enough, they will they will risk their lives. But that they someone does. They have a better chance of of getting to South Korea than to China. And South Korea is a is a better place to be or is yeah. a better chance that they won't be sent back or that they'll be right. they'll be safe safer. Right, exactly. Because South Korea, it's like I said, they will be safer because South Korea does understand what's going on there. Um when they had, I wanna say nineteen well, the Korean War, I wanna say it was around the fifties. But um, yeah. you know, folks had the choice of going to one or the other and now their descendants are having to live with that choice as awful as it is yeah yeah well then what we'll do is we'll see you guys next time on brutally honest talk radio leave a review for us on itunes stitcher spotify google play and wherever you listen to this podcast again thank you for joining us and we'll talk to you next week Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you for listening to Brutally Honest Talk Radio. If there's a topic you'd like us to cover, reach out at BruteHonestRadio at gmail.com. That's B-R-U-T, Honest Radio at gmail.com.